It's seven o'clock and I will call the Manchester Zoning Board of Appeals to order on Wednesday, July 17th. We will be beginning with the 16 Loading Place Road, which was continued from June without any discussion. Um, so Joy is a new member on the board, but since there was no discussion, it's not an issue. Okay. Um, I move to open the continued public hearing for the application of Luke Burbis for a special permit under sections 5.3, 6.3, 7.2, 12.5 of the zoning bylaw and other relief as may be necessary to add about 900 square feet to the footprint of a non-conforming residential structure and to add dormants to expand the second floor, the existing structure, which encroaches into the side setback at 16 Loading Place Road, Assessor's Map number 37, Lot number 49 in District A filed with the town clerk on May 13, 2024. Do I have a second? A second. Sean seconds. All in favor? Opening the public hearing? Aye. Aye. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> uh, with that, uh, Mr. Brooker, are you going to present the application on behalf of the applicants? Yes, please. Yep. My name is Remco Brooker. I'm with Brooker Design. LLC in town and uh, in charge of the design here, the owners here, Luke Lucas and Robin Blumen are here as well. And um, so we had a meeting yesterday, the site visit. A uh, number of you were in, in attendance there. Um, and he started off with explaining uh, how large the site is, how long the site is essentially, and also how far it really is the house from the neighbors. And I think that's a large part of uh, why we would like to apply for the special permit. Um, if you see here, this is the access point off of uh, Loading Place Road and long driveway over here to the house. And then the, the border or the side yards extend even further. So the house is really pretty much sited almost halfway in the length of the site itself. Um, it is non-conforming in the area that I've highlighted in yellow here. Uh, it's not conforming in the side yard setback. Uh, and uh, the majority of the house sits uh, within the building as well. Um, so the project really is to expand the house uh, by height and also by square footage. And uh, the majority of that expansion actually falls well within the side yard setback, so within the building envelope. And, uh, but we are also requesting for a small area to be expanded on the second floor in the non-conforming section. That's why we're here. Uh, had we not asked for that, then our expansions of the, of the house itself, the larger part of the house, we wouldn't have to be able to be here. So uh, the, the house itself right now, uh, it doesn't necessarily suit the owner's uh, requirements, and uh, it's, it has low ceiling heights. Um, they would like to expand the house and make it a better energy efficient home and, um, and do some more interesting things on the inside. Um, but along with that expansion came our request to uh, have two dormers, and that's in this area right here on top of the existing garage. In that case, there's uh, again, on that garage is a ridge height there that we are not asking to elevate further. So the overall height of the non-conforming section of the building will stay the same. And so we're just adding, asking for additional um, head height, if you will, for those dormers. And uh, then the additional areas that we're expanding uh, are also in yellow here. And those are actually one story expansions on the side of the house, really. The main ridge of the house is here. That will go up roughly three feet, not two foot six. Like I said yesterday, I checked the plans and it's roughly three feet. Uh, we're still under the requirement of 35 foot maximum height. We're around 33 foot. Three, I believe, 
the plans uh, 2.0. And so we feel that um, the request for additional height in that area is uh, not to any detriment to any neighbors. Very few people can see the house. Certainly now that the trees are up, uh, very few people can actually really notice what we'd be doing there. Uh, and whether leaves are down, there's really only three houses and they're quite far away. And uh, we feel there's no absolutely no impact on them. Um, and so that's why we feel this uh, expansion is, is okay. Am I correct that the abutter um, the side um, for which you're encroaching into the setback is conservation land? That's correct, yeah. Okay. So for people who weren't at the site visit, you couldn't see any of it. <laughs> I'm looking at a map right now and I can't see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, George, any questions? No questions. No. John. Brock. So you have the room labeled as a guest suite. Mm -hmm. Is is the is the application simply just to add dormers that are not conforming location, or is this also to create a two family house? Uh, no, the guest suite is really just for literally what it's what it's meant to be a guest suite. So a bedroom, a, a bathroom, and a closet. It is not a guest unit or uh, or additional. So there won't be any cooking devices? That's correct. No second means of egress? Locked doors? Nope. Nope. I, <laughs> not, no, we have not put it on Nothing there. else on the plans we don't know about? <laughs> I don't think so. It's going to be added in the future? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I can't speak for what happens after the renovations, but, you know, our our plans indicate what the intention is. Okay. Yeah. Very good. John? Uh, no questions. Is there any member of the public in the room who would like to be heard on this application? Is there any member of the public on Zoom who would like to be heard? If so, please raise your hand in Zoom so you can be recognized. I see no hands raised. So are we ready to close the public here? Okay. I whoops, did you have something, Sean? No, I just acknowledged you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I move to close the public hearing and enter into deliberations with respect to the application. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Georgia seconds. Vote. Georgia. I make a vote to issue the special permit. No. Oh, sorry. No, you you couldn't say you're putting me on the spot. You're voting to <laughs> close the public hearing. Oh, yes. I, I vote to <laughs> close the public hearing. Done. Approved. Yes. John. Okay. Now I'll make a motion. There we go. <laughs> well, first I'll say, say we should have deliberation. So what's the feeling of the board on the application? Are there any concerns? No. I mean, living in that area, <clears throat> excuse me, what's up my voice? <clears throat> There's, you can't even see the house. Okay. No, I mean, they're just, you know, building up in a Structure that already exists. So. I'm fine with it. I was going to, they are going up, but it's within the bylaw height restrictions. Granted, it's non conforming, but they're not even increasing the height on the non conforming part. So, well, and I think usually we're concerned about increased mass in a non conforming structure if it's close to another house, but because it's a budding conservation, yeah. it isn't exactly. Well, this lot is so, so large, I don't think it's right. To be detrimental to anything. Okay, with that, I'll make a motion. I move to approve the application of Luke Verbis 
for a special permit under sections 5.3, 6.3, 7.2, and 12.5 of the zoning bylaw and other relief as may be necessary at load 16 loading place road assessors map number 37 lot number 49 in district a filed with the town clerk on march 13 may 13 2024 based on a finding the addition to the footprint of the structure and addition of dormers to expand the second floor is in harmony with the purpose and intent of the bylaw will not substantially will not be substantially more detrimental or injurious to the neighborhood in which it is located than the existing non-conforming structure and requirements and conditions under section 12.5.2 of the zoning bylaw for the grant of a special permit have been met based on the condition condition the construction project which includes approximately 900 square foot of additional footprint and additional and two dormers to expand the second floor of the existing structure, which encroaches into the side setback. Um, proceed substantially in accordance with the following plans prepared by Brooker Design LLC dated May 2nd, 2024. T1.0 proposed site plan. C1.0 existing property survey. A1.1 proposed first floor plan. A1.2 proposed second floor plan. A2.0 proposed elevation a 2.1 proposed elevation and sections. Do I have a second? Second. Sean seconds. Mm -hmm. Ready to vote? Rob? Yes. Sean? Approved. Georgia? Yes. John? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Um, would anybody like to I can do it. Okay, thank you. Shots. <laughs> um, John will write it. Who would like to review it? I'll review it. Rob will review it. Okay. John Boyce. <laughs> okay. You're all set. Great. We'll write it within 90 days, and then there's a 20 day appeal period. Okay. Thank you. We'll try to be fast in the month. We have to wait for that. Yeah, now I'm going to move to 39 Kulu Point Avenue. I move to open the public hearing for the application of David and Martha Swift for a special permit under sections 2.0, 4.2, and 12.5 of the zoning bylaw and or other relief as may be necessary to install an in-ground swimming pool with associated pool decks, fence, and landscaping at 39 Coolidge Point Avenue, assessor's map number three, lot number 27, and district E, filed with the town clerk on June 4th, 2024. Do I have a second? Second. John seconds. Vote to open the public hearing. Georgia. Leave a motion to no. open. Oh my God, I'm sorry. We're just voting. I mean, you saw that. Yeah, yes. Open okay. public hearing. Done. Rob? Yes. John? Yes. Sarah vote yes. Okay. And uh, you're going to present on behalf of the applicant? Yes, good evening. It's Bob Griffin. Uh, we prepared the, the plans for uh, procedural. And uh, we're here on behalf of David Mark, and we apologize for not being able to be here for the evening. Uh, pretty straightforward project, as many of you saw who attended the site visit yesterday. The Swiss own an approximately 1.7 acre parcel on Coolidge Point, sort of long and narrow. And uh, the location of the pool is really behind the house. So it really would be barely visible from Coolidge Point Avenue as you drive along. Uh, the dashed line on this plan represents the accessory structure 
setback requirement, and you can see that the pool is going to be 32 feet away from the lot line as compared to a 15 foot requirement. So it's significantly further away than is necessary. We have engaged Tom McMullen, the landscape architect, to prepare a landscaping plan. Uh, we noticed at our site walk yesterday that there are a couple of trees in the pool patio area that will be removed for the project. But Mr. McMullen has designed uh, new screening to be placed between the uh, adjacent property at 39 or 37 and 30, 43, uh, Pool Point Road, to provide screening from that, from that direction. And again, the house and the existing structures provide enough screening from this side. Uh, and it'll, it'll uh, be consistent with the landscaping at the property in general the hearing. So it, it will be well, you know, well screened from the neighborhood and from the neighbors. Uh, we don't require a whole lot of grading changes for this project. It's uh, pretty uh, flat back in that area right now. Uh, the pool is a prefabricated unit. It's 16 feet by 40 feet. It will be brought in by truck and placed in a hole. And then the bluestone patio surrounding the pool will be installed. The pool deck is approximately 1,800 square feet, so it's not uh, particularly large. And the uh, pool will be encircled with about 200 feet of fencing, a four foot tall fence around the entire area to provide security for the pool. Uh, we meet all of the criteria listed in section 12.5.2 for uh, the pool structure to be installed at a residential location. And of course, I'd be happy to address any questions. Rob, do you have any questions? So, no, not really. John, uh, just so you, in case you don't remember, this is a site where we approved a sports court, not that one. Okay. Ne which was next to the septic. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Sport yeah. Court on the real photograph here. Yeah. Yep. That was a, a trend a couple, couple of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Post COVID. I remember this now. Um, no, I don't have any questions about the, the proposal. I'll just, you know, uh, uh, to make sure that any lighting is, you know, down lighting and within the requirements of, you know, typical pool projects. No lighting proposed. Yeah. Thank you. No questions. I don't need any questions. Um, is there any member of the public in the room who wishes to speak on this application? Um, is there any member of the public on Zoom who would like to speak on this application? If so, please raise your hand in Zoom so you can be recognized. I don't see any hands raised. So what's the board? Oh, wait a minute. I move to close the public hearing and enter into deliberations with respect to the application. Do I have a second? Second. Oh, John, second. Okay. We're voting on closing the public hearing. Rob? Yes. John? Yes. John? Yes. John. yes. Georgia? Very well, yes. Okay. What are the thoughts of the board on this application? A little bit. I have no issues with it. I don't have any problems with it. With that, I will make a motion. I move to approve the application of David and Martha Swift for a special permit under sections 2.0, 4.2, and 12.5 of the zoning bylaw. And or other relief as may be necessary to install a 16 foot by 40 foot in ground swimming pool with associated pool deck, fence, and landscaping. At 39 Coolidge Point Avenue, assessor's map number three, lot number 27 in District E, filed with the town clerk June 4th, 2024. Based on a finding that the proposed project to install a 16 by 40 foot in ground swimming pool with an 1,800 square foot blue stone pool deck surrounded by a four foot high fence and associated landscaping is in harmony with the purpose and intent of the bylaw, will not be substantially more detrimental or injurious to the neighborhood in which it is located and the requirements and conditions under section 12.5.2 of the zoning bylaw for the grant of a special permit have been met based on the following conditions. 
The pool, blue, blue stone pool deck patio and fence are cited as depicted on the plot plan for ZBA application prepared by Griffin Engineering Group, LLC, dated May 28, 2024. The pool and pool deck patio are enclosed by a fence at least four feet high, which conforms with the Manchester Zoning Bylaw, Manchester General Bylaw, and Massachusetts Building Code. The pool may contain interior low-level LED lighting, but no additional exterior lighting. That's in case I change the mind. <laughs> um, landscaping shall be installed substantially as depicted in the landscape plan created by Tom McMullen, landscape architect, ASLA, revision dated 5224. Do I have a second? A second. Sean seconds. Yes. Ready to vote? Rob? Yes. Sean? Approved. Approved. Georgia? Yes. Sarah Lodges? Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who wants to write this? We can write this in the next one, too. Okay. Since I missed last month's meeting. Okay. I'll review it if you want. Or do you want Georgia? I was going to say, I'm happy to review it. Yeah. Then she'll get to see the decision. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. The next application is for thirty nine Walker Road. Um, I move to open the public hearing for the application of Environmental Pools, Inc. on behalf of Laura Garth for a special permit under sections 2.0, 4.2, and 12.5 of the zoning bylaw and or other relief as may be necessary to install an in-ground dunite swimming pool and spa with pervious patio surrounded by a four-foot high black aluminum fence at 39 Walker Road, assessor's map number 32, Lot number 39 in District A, filed with the town clerk on June 17, 2024. Do I have a second to open the book? Second. Not second. Vote. Yes. Sean. Yes. Sean. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Sean. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Uh, is there somebody on Zoom who is going to present this application? Uh, yes. Uh, my name is Corey Everly with Environmental Pools. Okay. So we are looking to uh, install a 16 by 36 in-ground gunite pool um, on the side and rear of the lot, along with a six by six raised hot tub. Uh, the pool is gonna have the automatic uh, safety cover as well as a thermal tie down cover on the hot tub for late season use. Can you clarify whether the pool is 16 by 36 or 16 by 32? The survey shows 16 by 32. Mr. Emily, you still with us? Can you, yeah, can you hear me? Oh yeah, sorry, we lost you. I, I apologize. I was looking at the wrong plan, an older plan. Yeah, it is sixteen by thirty-two. Okay, great. Yep, and the hot tub will be six by six raised. So um, we're looking at adding about thirteen hundred square feet of uh, impervious or uh, permeable paver um, to the project. So the whole patio out back will be close to two thousand square feet around the pool uh, spa and connecting back to the rear of the house. Mm -hmm. And then um, the backyard, I believe, is you met with John yesterday from my office is relatively flat backyard. So there'll be no walls or anything like that. Just standard landscape plan, uh, again, with the fence to surround the perimeter. You were led to believe that there might be up to a two foot 
hold a retaining wall on a portion behind the pool? Before I'd like to, I'd like to, if we can, grade, essentially grade, but uh, if needed, we will have to do some sort of boulder wall, yep. Okay. Rob, any questions? No questions. No? No questions. No? No. Good. I actually, I do have a question. So if you don't, it looks like the fencing is only on three sides and the boulder wall kind of acts as that, that fourth side of the, the fencing. So if you don't mm. need the boulder wall or the grading can accommodate to meet level, do you anticipate adding a fence? Uh, we'd be using the existing fence. Okay. So the fence is going from the existing fence on the property line and then is going to tie into the house in the in the front corner. Okay, and the and the rear goes yep. beyond, beyond the existing patio and connects into the house. Correct. Okay. Any member of the public in the room wish to speak on this application? Any member of the public on Zoom wish to speak on this application? If so, please raise your hand in Zoom. No hands are raised. Um, with that, I will move to close the public hearing and have the board enter into deliberations with respect to the application. Do I have a second? Second. Sean seconds. Vote to close the public hearing. Rob? Yes. Sean? Yes. John? Yes. Georgia? Yes. Sarah Lodges? What's the board's thoughts on this application? No Same for me. Um, I mean, the, the fence goes to the house. Uh, you are planning on alarming the windows and the doors that lead out to the pool, correct? Is that required with the automatic pool cover? Yes. Okay, then, it is. Okay. Yeah. Then, yeah. Then we'll be um, using the door alarms on the doors and windows. Okay. And those will be UL listed? Yep. Exactly. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. I didn't mean to leave my outside that time. Um, <laughs> with that, I, I move to approve the ap application of Environmental Pools Inc. on behalf of Lori Garth for a special permit under sections 2.0, 4.2, and 12.5 of the zoning bylaw and or other relief as may be necessary to install a 16 foot by 32 foot in ground gunite swimming pool with a pervious paver patio and a six foot by six foot raised spa surrounded by a four foot high black aluminum fence at 39 Walker Road, assessor's map number 32, lot number 39 in District A, filed with the town clerk on June 17, 2024 based on a finding that the proposed project to install the in-ground gunite swimming pool with a pervious paper patio and spa surrounded by a four foot high black aluminum fence is in harmony with the purpose and intent of the bylaw, will not be substantially more detrimental or injurious to the neighborhood in which it is located and the requirements and conditions under section 12.5.2 of the zoning bylaw the grant of a special permit have been met based on the following conditions. The pool, pervious patio, spa, and fence are cited as depicted on the proposed swimming pool plan prepared by Donahue, Donahoe Survey Inc. dated June 13, 2024. 
The pool, spa, and patio are enclosed by a fence at least four feet high with self-locking gates connecting to an existing fence on the property line and the corners of the existing residence and alarmed entrances from the house entering into the area, which conforms with the Manchester Zoning Bylaw, Manchester General Bylaw, and the Massachusetts Building, Building Code. The pool may contain interior low-level LED lighting of up to four lumens per square foot of pool surface. No additional exterior lighting shall be installed. And um, the pool will um, will contain an automatic um, cover. Um, so if the building inspector determines the alarms are not required with an automatic cover, um, then they would not be required. Do I have a second? Second. Judge of seconds. Oh, Rob. Yes. John. Approved. John. Approved. Yes. 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 Zero. Yes. And John's going to write this one? I'll write this one. Do you want to read it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That is all the applications we have tonight. Um, good news is we have no applications for August, so we will not be meeting in August. Um, get a month off. Has that ever happened before? <laughs> yeah, um, not very often, but it always seems to be August when we don't get an application. Yeah, people are on summer mode. Um, now, our, our newest alternate member or associate member, I think it's the technical name, um, discovered that she has a conflict with the third Wednesday of the month after she accepted the appointment. So I'm suggesting that for the September and October meetings, we meet the fourth Wednesday of the month, which would be September 25th and October 24th. Um, We'll have to meet on the third Wednesday for November and December because of the holiday schedule. We don't want to meet the day you said after. I don't want to meet the day you said after. Okay. Um, we did not receive the minutes for May 15th, so there's no minutes to review. Um, I believe we have dis decisions outstanding, all the decisions from May and June are outstanding, and we need the minutes in order to write those decisions. So you have any sense when we're going to receive those minutes, Gail? We talked about um, finishing the minutes for Doyle and um, May and June will come pretty quickly. Because I'm running out of time on 90 School Street. Okay, I will get 90 yeah. School Street to you. Yeah, that was May, and so we're getting... We're getting towards the 90 day deadline. I will get that to you next week. Okay. Um, the other thing that didn't get on this agenda, which needs to be on the September agenda, is to um, appoint a chair or reappoint a chair. As it may be, but it's not on the agenda, so I don't think it's appropriate to do it. Right now. So I will graciously continue to do it. Thank we you. Vote on it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll look at me. Yeah. Um, anything else people have? Uh, any update with the 40B? Oh, yeah, I can, I, I can let you know what's going on with 40B. So all of the briefs, so the HAC concluded its evidentiary hearing. Yeah. All of the briefs um, 
have been submitted by town council, the council for the intervener, Manchester I mean, Essex Conservation Trust, and by the applicant. So everything is with H HAC and has been with HAC since, I think it was, they kept having to extend things because one of the attorneys was ill. I believe it was filed the end of May or first week in June. Um, it's my understanding, and so now it's with the HAC. Um, it's my understanding they're not necessarily on a fast track. Um, so we're not expecting to really hear from them until 2025. Yeah. That's kind of how it's been. Okay. What their history has been, but who knows? Um, I don't know what their volume, volume is, but I know it took them three years to issue one. Uh, so. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? With that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. John moves. Second. <laughs> Second. Rob seconds. Vote to adjourn. Rob. Yes. Sean. Yes. Georgia. Yes. John. Yes. Sarah Brooks. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. Who, is, who is reviewing now? 16.